Hey, my YouTube friends, Professor Walker. And this video is going to be about the pipe restoration process and how I restore pipes. Now, I am not, I repeat, not a professional pipe restorer. I don't make a living doing this. I am just an amateur. But I've learned some things from the folks out here that are really good. The Reborn Pipes blog is one of the greatest. Mike Canerod Piper, The Bear Pipe, and there are many other YouTube videos that I've watched, blogs that I've read to learn what I have. And I don't have necessarily all the equipment to do things in the best way, but with what I got, I do okay and I can make the pipes look presentable and I think with the equipment and little things I have you could get started restoring pipes and doing a fairly decent job without a whole lot of expense so there's two pipes that I'm going to be working on right now one is this Dr. Grabo Belvedere and this Dr. Grabo Standard um, this Dr. Grabo Standard it's a pretty stout pipe and once we get into it we're going to maybe figure out how deep the crack is but there is a crack here at the top um, but hopefully this thing will still be a functional pipe when we're done um, the first thing I do when I get any pipe that I'm going to restore is I just kind of check the bowl and see if it needs to be reamed now both of these actually uh, or neither one of these have a real heavy cake layer so um, I'm not going to do a tremendous amount to this. Now I have one of those really cool reamers that I just recently got. Um, thank you, Fred. But what I use mostly is just my Swiss Army knife. And I just very carefully just scrape a little bit. And you can see there is a little bit in here. In this bowl, it looks like maybe it was reamed before by somebody and they just didn't take a lot of care because it's, it's a little bit unsmooth. Um, but just some real gentle scraping is going to get that off. Now the second one, it's the same thing. There's just not, not a huge amount, very, actually very little buildup. And see just a little bit on there and that's it and then so once I finish kind of scraping out what little um, cake is here then the next thing we're gonna do is the salt bath okay so now for the salt bath I use kosher salt and what I do is just fill each bowl and you can see with this view that crack there on the bowl um, Again, hopefully we're going to be able to repair that. I take a couple, um, a couple pipe cleaners, stick them in the shank, and you can see already they're starting to soak through, and you can see some of the dark, uh, some of that guck sucking in there. And I only do this, you know, maybe three hours or so. I know some people soak them longer. Um, there's kind of mixed feelings from what I've read from people about how long you should soak these or whether you should soak them at all, but it's with the salt. And then what I use is just some basic alcohol. You should get the uh, highest concentration you can. Um, I know it does come in higher than 91, but that's just what I have right now. Some people like to use Everclear, vodka. Um, just some sort of alcohol that's as high a concentration as you can get it. Um, I just put those little clips on there to hold it up a bit to keep uh, the alcohol in the bowl. Um, if you want to preserve the finish, you know, you just want to be as careful as you can with the alcohol um, so it doesn't get on the finish. But both these I'm going to strip the finish down so I'm not too terribly worried about it. And while this is going on, I'm also going to now put the stems in a little bath I have here of OxyClean. 
and this will be the start of getting all of this nasty oxidation off and once both of these are done a good three hours in then we'll move on in this little tiny little tray I got here I actually got this at Target uh, over there in their dollar aisle it was a couple of bucks and um, just recently bought this because then it's like a nice little workspace to put your stuff in a little contained area and then the little tiny glass tray came from a Daiso a little Japanese store and you know it was a buck or two also and before this I was doing it a little willy-nilly and would put the stems just in a cup or something but this I think was gonna work really well and look at that you can see already you know, the gunk starts coming off right away all right so I'm gonna uh, leave this here good three hours and then I will come back to it three hours later okay so these pipes have been soaking uh, for a couple hours now and you can really see now how much of that darkness has soaked in and then over here where we have the stems um, this isn't too bad uh, these stems aren't as dirty as some others are because sometimes this liquid it's just absolutely brown but it's not right now um, all right, I am going to soak these stems a little longer, but what I do like to do is take a magic eraser and just scrub a little bit in the soaking process. And you can see how much grime comes up. surface is actually really rough right now because there's so much oxidation. I'm going to sand this, but this just helps remove some of that surface oxidation. You can't see the other one. put it back in the bath for a while okay so I dumped the salt out the salt bath and then usually what I do before I sand these and clean a whole lot more is I just kind of very gently make a pass through here because now there'll probably be just a little more of this black that comes up that wouldn't really come up before after after soaking but this it's actually pretty clean in there not a lot this one had a little bit more But even so, still not a terrible lot. All right, so next step, which is going to be to take a whole ton of pipe cleaners soaked in alcohol and to get all this shank area cleaned out and uh, hopefully looking like new. Okay, when you start running your first pipe cleaners through, the first ones are going to be all like this. They're just going to be black. And depending on how nasty this thing is, um, you could go through almost a whole pack of pipe cleaners. And um, this one, I don't know. We'll see. Probably a couple dozen is my guess. Okay, one of the next little things I do is I take a little bit of this Never Dull, and it 
looks like this, and I just take like a teeny little piece of it, and where this metal is here, I just wipe it on the metal, and this should clean that. Now you can wait till later in the process, but I would rather do it before I strip off and restain the pipe. Already it's cleaning that, and then just wipe it along the edge, and it will make your little metal pieces shine again. And it definitely doesn't take very much of this stuff. And I'm going to do that to both pipes. I'm just going to kind of wipe it when it's done because there is a cleaning chemical in there that I probably don't want everywhere. But you can see it is much shinier than the one that hasn't been cleaned yet. Also, I did use the reaming tool a bit. Um, I thought I was going to be able to use just my little trusty Swiss army knife, but as I was trying to get the cake out of the bowl, there was a couple stubborn places that the reamer came in real handy. And if you've never used one of these reamers before, it also has this drill on the other side that goes through here. And um, you're going to get a lot of pipes when you get these <clears throat> beat up estate pipes that it won't even be able to go through because it's so clogged. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and just set these aside. Uh, the next step on the bowls is going to be to sand them down and get rid of the existing finish. But now I'm going to move to the stems. <clears throat> so the stems have been soaking all this time. I took them out, did a little bit of magic eraser, um, but now they're going to be done soaking. <clears throat> and the next step I'm going to do with these is I'm going to do some real serious sanding um, to make these things start looking nice. So I have a nice little collection of sandpaper and then I have these micro mesh pads and then some also some hobby sandpaper that go from grits uh, pretty low grits of like uh, 300 all the way up to 12,000 but on the stems what I start with is I start with an 800 and then work my way up so I got the 800 I got lots of pieces of it all over um, and um, I just start sanding and you can see right away all that gunk coming up. Now when you're sanding, you want to be really careful of emblems. You don't want to sand the emblem. You just want to stay on the stem. But now this is going to come up pretty easy. And this is going to start dramatically looking like a nice stem again pretty quickly. Okay, so after the 800... Then I'm moving up to a 2000. And I'm just going to repeat this on up as we till we get to the higher grits. Okay, so the first stem is definitely clean, but it needs some serious polishing. Um, it's, it's rough. So I'm going to have to do quite a bit of sanding and polishing on this one. But it's clean and um, you can see the stinger cleaned up really nice. Um, but definitely need some polishing because it's it's got rough patches on here. So I'm going to be sanding my night away with this one. Okay, so the other stem, this one actually cleaned up much nicer. It's not perfect, you can see there's little flaws here, but this is good for me. Uh, the metal shines up, it looks just like new, 
Um, I'm very pleased with this stem, but I still got a lot more sanding to do with the other one. Okay, so the second stem is polished up and ready to go. It did not turn out as nice, I think, as the other stem, but that's because of the type of material it is. Um, this one, it doesn't appear, it's not a vulcanite, it's some form of a hard plastic and um, just doesn't come, just doesn't come as nice. I don't know if it's acrylic or what it is. Um, just didn't look as nice. Uh, but these are both done, ready to go. So now all of my work is going to focus all my attention on the bowls. Okay, so I sanded the one with the crack with a 800 grit and then 2000 grit sandpaper. And now I'm going to use a little bit of super glue to try to fill in this crack. Okay, so the super glue is in the crack. I'm gonna let it dry completely, and so I will come back to this tomorrow and sand it down, and it should be fairly smooth. Okay, so here's the Belvedere, and I've really sanded the snot out of it. It's very smooth on top. It still has a little burn mark right here but um, I felt like I'd sanded enough um, I didn't want to go too much further down because it seemed like I was sanding and sanding so that little mark is gonna stay um, but now I'm pretty much ready to stain this so I'm gonna prepare to do that I stick a wine cork in the bottom and um, just kinda something pokey on this side and then we'll put the stain on. We'll show you how we do that. Okay, so I'm gonna be ready to stain the Belvedere, and I just use the Phoebeans uh, brown leather, the dark brown leather. I also have black, and it comes in other colors, anything you wanna use. I just got this one at Hobby Lobby, but you can get uh, all their other colors online. Like I said, I just put a, a little cork in there. Um, this one it didn't fit very well, um, but it, it'll work okay. And then I used to use this to hold it while I put the dye on. And let's go ahead and get that done. So I just take my pipe cleaner, get a little bit of dye on and then I just start spreading it on I'm gonna make sure to get this area right here at the top of the, of the rim and I'm sorry if the camera angle gets bad from time to time Now this stuff, it will dye your hands. So if I was smart, I would have on my latex gloves right now, but sometimes I'm not smart. All right, so it is fully covered. And then all I'm gonna do is just set this aside let it dry a little bit, um, wipe it down, and then depending on what it looks like, I may put on another coat. Okay, so now it's been dyed and dried off, rubbed off, and um, this looks good to me. I'm not gonna put another coat on, uh, but all I'm gonna do now is work on waxing and shining this up putting the stem on and we have one pipe done and then the second pipe we're still gonna wait uh, till tomorrow 
until uh, that super glue is all nice and perfect and then we'll start working on that one. All right, so here's the final product with the Belvedere. Nicely stained. Nice pretty stem. Huge improvement. Again, this is not a super professional restoration, um, but I'm pretty happy with it. There's still that little scorch mark that I just kind of chickened out on sanding it anymore. But I still think this now is going to be a good looking, nice smoking Dr. Grabo, uh, just with a wee bit of work. Now, tomorrow we'll come back and we're going to be working on that other pipe. And one of the things that when you take the finish off of these, get them down to the briar, you will notice some of the fills that you know are factory fills, but that's okay. Um, to me, those are part of the pipe and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, if you get a good quality buffer, yeah, you can buff these to be a lot shinier, but I don't have a good quality buffer. Really what my buffer is, <laughs> is this. Um, I do have a wheel, but the wheel um, I only use uh, for the stems. I don't use it for the briar and it's a really cheap kind of junky wheel anyway. There we go. Pipe number one down. Okay, so the standard is now done. The stem, it's not really perfect, but I did about all the sanding I could stand on it. And then if you look over here where the crack is, this is the repair. It's been filled with super glue, sanded down. And um, again, I wouldn't give this pipe to someone else because I wouldn't want this to fail. But I'm going to use this pipe myself, um, smoke it, and hopefully this lasts for a long time because this is a good stout pipe. And um, with just some reasonable cleanup, a small super glue repair with some sanding, I think we're back in business. And that is basically. How I do my restorations, as amateur as they are. Okay, and this is the last thing to show you guys. This is basically my little kit. Little Stanley toolbox. Um, don't use these containers, but on this side, um, a little bit of Tripoli. Um, some corks. My reamer. Another little just scraping tool and a paintbrush, not to paint, but this is one of the things that I will stick in the shank to hold the pipe while I'm staining it. And then inside, on uh, this top little tray, these are just pipes that either I'm working on or like this one that's just pretty much garbage that actually all I really do is sand on it to get briar dust to fill things but most of these other pipes in here I will hopefully be making nice and pretty um, especially this one this is a Savinelli silver this one uh, still needs some work done uh, but I keep my Swiss Army knife in here matches because you never know you might need matches some regular super glue pipe cleaners because of course we always need that and little nozzles for super glue and then under here of course a rag because you always need a rag uh, brush because I don't really have a good buffing wheel so that I use this to buff the carnauba and then down here I've got my black dye and my dark brown hopefully I'll acquire some more I also have down here the black tinted super glue and amber tinted super glue for stem repair magic eraser this is my box of sandpaper kind of messy with pads and also a file 
another little file in here for little odds and ends and then this is empty uh, but this one just has some clips in it and then these are both trays the little glass tray and then little metal tray just for any little work that might be done and that's uh, pretty much everything I use other than you know again there's some other chemicals and whatever hand tools like screwdrivers and things that uh, may be needed.